we got to start off with expressing our condolences for a legend that lost his life. Um, DMX, most people know, obviously, his, his body of work, but if you don't, super influential in the hip-hop game and hip-hop culture, really hit the scene strong in the mid to late 90s and then took off. Uh, I believe he was the he was the first artist who had first three albums out the gate go multi-time platinum. Um, I, I think it's been done since then, but at the time he was the first to ever do it. His first three albums, I think that the least selling out of the first three maybe did six million, which is crazy to say it only did six. Oh, but yeah, DMX, <laughs> yeah, only six, but DMX was super influential, especially at a time in hip hop where everyone wanted to be super cool and super laid back. He brought a certain energy. He He, was very direct with what he dealt with in his, with his life. And uh, it's a super loss for the game, man, and for our culture. Yeah, um, it, it, like, it really sucks. And it hurts even more now, um, especially, you know, being around uh, family members that dealt with substance abuse. But just hearing, you know, watching the Rough Riders Chronicles and, and interviews and stuff, and hearing DMX talk about how he got started using um, like when I, when I, when I saw that, I, it just, it made me feel worse for DMX because I understand, you know, how hard it is to overcome drug addiction. So like, I really felt bad for him. And this is somebody again, that since like my sophomore year of high school has been one of my favorite artists. Uh, I was at the gym today. I was just telling, telling you, man, I, I was on elliptical for about an hour and I did not hear anything other than a DMX song that entire hour I was on the machine. It was just like motivation after motivation. Every time I wanted to, wanted to just like, I'm, I'm ready to get off this thing. Just one of them songs just came on and it's like, oh, you gotta keep pushing yourself. Um, you know, I, I applaud everyone that came out that went to the hospital, everybody that's been sending their prayers, the whole the Rough Rider family that, that went outside and stood out there. It looked like that, uh, that scene in Malcolm X when uh, he did this with the fingers and it was like, and we out, like that's how I look, you know, just so it just shows a lot of love um, and respect that people had for, for, for DMX. One of the greatest to ever do it. Unfortunately, you know, substance abuse gets the best of a lot of us and um, his life was cut short, but he will not be forgotten at all. Um, you know, he will continue to, to live on. It's going to be a lot of those, you know, even though it sucks, like we got the Biggie days on the radio, the Pac days on the radio. It's going to be a lot of DMX days on the radio. Um, I'm sure they, they got something else in, in, in the works. Shout out to Hove and Beyonce as well, because, you know, Hove, like, Hove is like, he's like, the, he's the everybody's guardian angel. Like, how Hove and Beyonce come in and they buy DMX's masters uh, and give them to his children. Nothing, no charge, no nothing. Just, hey, that's for y'all. You know, and that just shows from somebody who's on Jay-Z's level, that shows how much respect that he had for DMX to do something like that for his kids. You know, like, I, I'm, it just, it's, it's just crazy, man. Yeah, um, X, X and Hove have a storied history together. Obviously, we know about their days battling before they both were mainstream artists. Um, but as, as you said, and we always got to give credit to Hove in these situations, because even before DMX passed, and we always talk about giving people their flowers while they're still here, Jay cleared his debt with Def Jam while he was still alive, you know what I'm saying, so that DMX didn't feel the pressure of I have to put more albums out because I owe this to the label. Jay said, nah, you, you good. You, if you want to make music, you can. If you don't, you don't have to, but there isn't this debt hanging over your head, man, and um, you know, thinking back the other day, as you highlighted, you know, X, um, I remember when, when that album dropped, man, um, it's dark and hell is hot. And at the time that was my first year away from New York. And I remember coming back on a drive. We were living in Fort Knox, Kentucky at the time, I, as I've talked about before, my stepdad had, uh, you know, served in, in the military and, and my mom and I were driving back to New York for the summer. And that's a 14 hour drive. If, if no one's ever taken it. And I remember playing that album front to back nonstop to the point where my mom was so mad at me because as soon as the joint was over, flipped to the other side. And this was tape days. This was yep. right before the CDs came out. So you had to have the tape. Yep. And I remember bonk, put that joint in, let that play front to back, flip it to the B side. Oh, we done? Oh, I right, we'll put it back in. Let's go. What's up? Like, and, and you know, I, 
I have so much love and respect for X Man. Um, what he brought to the game, what he brought to the culture, how genuine he was. He never changed up. He never tried to appeal to people that or present himself in a way that he wasn't. This is me. This is my raw truth. As ugly as it may seem, this is what it is. And like you said, man, for for the highs that he reached, as we've already highlighted, he had some some very dark moments and some very lows. Um, obviously, getting hooked on drugs at a very young age, and he was tricked into the way he was hooked on drugs. Obviously. Um, being in a boy's home and being left there by his mom and abandoned at a very young age. So, you know, he, he dealt with a lot of traumatic experiences that ultimately led to the artists that we all fell in love with later on. And it's unfortunate that within our culture too many times, a lot of these legends don't get to live into their 60s and 70s and really enjoy the fruits of their labor. You know, he was only 50 years old. And we know 50 is not old, you know what I'm saying? He, he should be somebody that we continue to celebrate. He should have been here to watch us celebrate him. Um, but like you said, now we're just left with the, with the memories of the songs and, and what those songs meant to us. And obviously every year, you know, we'll, we'll throw on, like you said, DMX songs on the radio or on our playlist to, re to remind us of how great he was. Yeah, this, I'm actually looking forward to, uh, to the BT Awards and the Bible Awards this year, because I know they're going to put together a tribute, something crazy. For, for DMX, so I, I'm really looking forward to that. And you know, one thing, you know, other thing about DMX was he was never afraid to to show his love for God. And I always respected that uh, about DMX. Like he'll shoot you in one breath, <laughs> but then in the next breath, he'll say, "Thank God, I'm, I'm on my knees. I'm praying. Lord, give me a sign." You know, so I like you just you just had to respect X, and he was somebody like. You know, just just the combination of the voice, his energy, everything. He wasn't in no gangs. He wasn't nothing like that. But X was like, he was just one of them dudes. He was like, you just looked at as, yo, that's not somebody you want to mess around with. And it's like, yo, this dude is, is this little skinny dude right here, X. But he's 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 that. He's, he's definitely a, a legendary MC. Um, and he will truly be missed. Absolutely, man. And, you know, the, the streets, we, we love to throw out the term real, recognize real. Um, but what X, it was genuine. Yes. Everything, like you said about him, was genuine. And that's why I think we fell in love with him, because it wasn't a facade. It wasn't a made up character. Like, this is who he was, whether you saw him in a music video, saw him in the street. You know, I, I had the privilege to bump into him one time in the street and he was the same way. But like you said, great energy. You know what I'm saying? What up? Dap you out. Boom. And then he might just keep it moving. Or if he was hanging with some people, we'll talk. But he was genuine. And, and so definitely our, our thoughts and prayers are with his family at this time. And, you know, X will always be with us no matter what, man. Motherfucker, this is your African King's coming, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 